All right, we're back. Melinda, what are we going to talk about today? What do you want to know? I want to know how to charge to diagnose a client's problem. Okay, let's get into it. So give me more context or some information as to why you're even asking this question in the first place. So per your suggestion on a video or a blog I watched, you mentioned the Win Without Pitching Manifesto. Right. So I read that, and in it, he describes how doctors and lawyers, they'll charge their clients for a diagnosis. Why don't we as creatives do the same thing? But I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what a diagnosis in the creative field looks like, and how do I charge for it, and how do I quantify the value? Let's look at those professions and see what they do that we seem to put value on it. When somebody comes out to estimate a broken refrigerator or your car needs work, it's making a weird sound, they don't do that work for free. And they've been trained via trade school, through experience, or through many, many years of education how to do this. Like we can't go into the problem assuming we already know the answer, and that's the first problem that we as designers need to change our mindset. Okay, if you come into the problem saying you need a new logo, you need a new logo, you need a new logo, your diagnostic process has no value to me at all. So we need to start thinking about maybe we're looking for a communication problem to solve, maybe we're looking for a customer experience problem to solve, or a business problem to solve, and then we can begin to provide real diagnostic and be able to charge for it. So let's look at it. What's an experience you've had where somebody has had to take time to kind of understand the problem and has charged you for it? And what we can do is map that experience to what you will be doing in the near future. Anything come to mind? A therapist is the first one. Okay. The second would be a doctor. Okay. And I'm something more relatable, sick. something very blue collar, you know? Um, it doesn't need to be so fancy. Okay. My hot water heater okay. is not working. My Currently? Yeah, I just had an you issue with it actually. Yeah. <laughs> hot water yeah. heater. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's perfect. So you need to figure out this is a fairly simple problem in that it can either be repaired or replaced. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a car problem? Okay, why don't we do that? Okay. So let's do that again. Okay. So what have you encountered in your life where somebody's had to diagnose the problem and charge you for it? Car issues. Like what kind of car issues? What happened? Uh, my car is making a really strange sound. Mm -hmm. So an abnormal sound and it's cause for alarm for you. Right. Did a check engine light or service light turn on? Yeah. Okay, so that's a clear sign you gotta go get this thing taken care of. It's not just a figment of your imagination, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you take it into the dealership what kind of car is it? Uh, Toyota Prius. Toyota Prius. Some, something's wrong with the Toyota. And you bring it in, and what do they do? They can't remember. They, they say that they're going to check it out. And then after that, they send me a bill for how much it is. Or they say this is, it's going to take this much, and here's the bill. OK. Or the estimate. The estimate All right. right. Now, it's been some time since I've taken my car into the dealership. But the last time that I did, that I can remember, is when I used to own a Mercedes. And their process is similar, but a little bit different. It's a little mm -hmm. bit more detailed. So if, if I may, I'm going to tell you how it worked, OK? Bring in the car. First of all, you make an appointment. You bring in the car. And I already, I'm already expecting to pay money, because I don't expect people to do work for free. And they say, OK, great. We'll have our chief mechanic look at it. What's the problem? He comes out. He talks to you. So what's the thing? And you explain it, and they'll ask you a few more questions because they want to narrow their scope of exploration. If you say it's something with the brakes, then that's where they're going to look if you say something else. Now, luckily, cars, all modern cars, have a port that you plug something in, and their computers can talk to the computer that's inside your car, and it can start to figure out what the problem is. Okay? So I go away, and they start to do work. They start to investigate the problem. And then I get a call from my rep. And the rep or the agent will say, you know, Chris, here's the problem. We need to replace this, this, and that. This is what that'll cost. But we also, when of course, they're going to upsell me. We also found this, this, and that problem. You're probably okay for now, but it's something you might want to consider doing next time. 
should we move forward? It's gonna cost this amount of money. Mm -hmm. So we estimate, it's an estimate, time and materials, it's gonna cost this. Are you okay with $1,200? And I'm like, oh, that's a lot of money. Sometimes I go back and say, you know, is there anything you can do for me in terms of the price? Like, yeah, you know what? You're a long time loyal customer. We value your business. We'll knock uh, $200 off. How does that sound to you? And I say, great, why don't you do this? Okay, that's a diagnostic process with a prescription for what to do. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's map it onto how you work now. Right. Okay, is there something that you do that is similar to this diagnostic process? This is how it's hard to apply this thinking to my process is because most of my clients come with their their diagnosis what is themselves. that called it's called being self-diagnosed mm -hmm. if you went into your doctor and said you know i have a tumor it's cancer stage x and we need to operate right now no biopsy necessary they would look at you like you're insane and so what we want to do is we want to act like doctors, lawyers, mechanics, even real estate agents, whoever. We have to adopt a more professional practice. One is we cannot go into it assuming we know what the answer is. We have to ask a series of questions that allow us to narrow the scope of, of uh, search or exploration. So if somebody comes into you and says, Linda, I need a new logo or I need a new website, how should you respond to that? Well, from what you just said, with a series of questions. Well, no, I'm in role play mode <laughs> with you right now. You, you want to break character? Let's, okay. I'm in it with you right now. All right. Linda, we need a new website. What's your company? Joe Schmo Plumbing. <laughs> what, uh, who do you serve or what, who's your target audience? People that need plumbing work. Where, do they live in a specific area? 30 mile radius. 30 mile radius yeah. of wherever you're at. Yep. You know. um, Anaheim. Anaheim. Okay, cool. Uh, what type of budget are you working with as far as your website? I don't know. I don't know what these things cost. Okay. Well, we normally Not charge a lot. between ten and 15000 for Woo! a website. What do you do for that? Can't can you just like download a template or something and I just need something? See, that's where I don't, I get stuck with that when I'm in that kind of situation. That's fine. Okay. When a client comes to you with a diagnose, like when they self-diagnose, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to accept that. That's the first problem. You, you already went down their path. You let yeah. them lead the yeah. conversation. And so you have to stop them. Okay, this is what Blair talks about. He goes, you might need a new website, but let me ask you a few questions just to make sure. Mm -hmm. You might need a new logo, you might need a new brochure, or you might think that the colors on your brand mm -hmm. or your identity design is off, but let me ask you a few questions just to make sure. And what type of That question? stops them right away, you right. understand? So yeah. first you have to stop them from moving forward. Don't continue to engage them there. Yeah, I definitely need to do that because when someone comes to me, and they just say, okay, I need an opt-in for my website, or I need a logo, or I get a lot of those. And of course. I'm not obviously handling it like that. Okay, um, so we're gonna change so the things. So that's number one. For, you know, stop, drop, and roll. First thing is you gotta <laughs> stop, okay? Yes. And now you need to drill into what is driving this decision. Mm -hmm. A lot of why questions here come to mind. So let's rewind the tape, and we're gonna do this scene again and we're gonna do it again and you're gonna try, we're gonna watch you do this and fail like five times. It's like that movie with Tom Cruise where he keeps reliving it. Okay, so you ready? So yes. day two, Groundhog Day, all right? So I need a new website. I'm Joe Schmo Plumbing in Anaheim. And um, you might need a new website, but before 
Wait. See, I'm already screwing up. Okay, you, you might know, just be here. Don't look at your notes. You're like a like a book learner. <laughs> Forget the books, okay? Just all right. follow me. First of all, you have to stop the client. So let's stop them, okay? Right. So I need a new website. I'm Joe Schmo Plumber from Anaheim. Hi, Joe Schmo. Before <laughs> you don't know me that like that, you can't call me Joe Schmo. Uh, before we talk about your website, I'd love to ask you for more questions about your business. Oh, okay. What do you want to know? Um, I'd love to know why you want a new website. You know, I'm not getting as many new leads as I'd like. Not not as many people are calling us that, like they used to. And how do you normally get clients? I don't know. You've never checked? They just call us. Maybe Yellow Pages, maybe Yelp, maybe a referral. Do you have any way to reach out to your clients that you're actively pursuing? I don't know. I'm just a plumber. Like, I don't, what are you talking about? How do you get your clients? Referrals. Referrals. Ads. Okay. Ads, you do ads. Well, Yellow Pages. That's okay. an ad, right? All right. Um, why? So is, this is where this is where it breaks down this again. This is where it breaks down. It keeps breaking down. Well, first I have to tell you this: is that you cannot just do a hard pivot to let, let me talk about your business. Mm -hmm. You first have to embrace, and this is something I call like embrace and pivot. So first thing is you have to acknowledge you probably need a new website. That's embracing it. Okay. okay. So you validate what I say by rephrasing it back to me reflecting it back okay you probably need a new website but as I've often discovered sometimes when I ask my clients a few questions we discover that actually they don't need a new website and they need something totally different I'd like to ask you a few questions if you don't mind mm -hmm. you just say it like plain English so you don't try to get caught up in the marketing speak or being too slick I just try and talk like a regular human being does that make sense mm -hmm. okay yeah so let's assume that that happens now the reason why you're stuck is because you actually have to develop a new skill set mm -hmm. of actually understanding business problems, marketing problems, and conversion issues, and all these kinds of things. So this is where you can't just say what I'm saying and for it to be effective. Now, a lot of people talk about doing strategy just to get the sale again. Well, that is a very superficial way to approach it, and that's not going to yield any real results. Okay? A doctor can't say, well, let me run through a battery of tests with you before I prescribe a solution only to not know what the battery tests are they're gonna put the thing in the thing and then they're gonna run that and then we're gonna look at this what are you talking about it's very specific mm -hmm. okay we're gonna take a few skin samples from you I'm gonna put a solution on it see if there's any kind of thing we'll look at it at the microscope in the room come back there's there's no fungus whatever whatever it is they're gonna say so this means that the designer the traditional designer has to acquire very different skills that you weren't taught in school perhaps, and you're going to have to engage the person on a much deeper level. This is the beginning of the road to a different person and a different you. The reason why I can charge 10, 20 times as much as you is because I've acquired these skills and continue to work on it myself. Mm -hmm. You can't get there without doing the work. You can't speak from a platform of knowledge and information if you don't have that knowledge. And so this is where we will begin. Does that make sense? It does. You cannot charge to prescribe something because you don't have the tools. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to learn how to become more valuable, to charge for the diagnostic phase, which I think you should be able to, you have to acquire a whole set of new skills. The, the thing that I'm going to tell you is this. One is come in, be empty. Don't come in thinking that I have a solution ready to go. And when the client offers you up a self-diagnosed prescription to whatever it is, a self-prescribed solution, I think what you have to do is embrace it and pivot as quickly as you can to acknowledge that that might be true, but let's find out for sure. And then you're going to ask lots of questions. And in order to do this faithfully, you have to be prepared to recommend a solution that is not you. Not all doctors can operate on you. Not all doctors can solve your problem. Not all mechanics can solve your car problems. They'll refer you to a specialist to say this is outside of the realm of what, I, what it is I'm able to do today. And if you're able to do that, you'll find that your client interactions will dramatically change. You're no longer 
an order taker, you're going to be a consultant and advisor and potentially a partner for your client. That's it. Anything else you want to say, Melinda, before we wrap up here? No, I'm excited to apply these these principles. All right. So maybe on the next episode, Melinda's going to share with me why she thinks I'm so intimidating, but when she actually sat here, it's not so bad. We'll get into that. See you guys next time.